Welcome back to In Your Neighborhood. We're heading to Winfield to see one company that's changing the snowboard industry. Tucked away in Winfield is a business you may not expect. Gilson Boards creates locally crafted, innovative snowboards that are on pace to change the entire snowboard industry. Nicholas Gilson came to the area in 2013, but his love of building, and building snowboards in particular, started at a young age. I was 14 when, when I built this originally. It's made out of plywood from Home Depot, cedar, um, and fiberglass, and it was pressed in, in between an old door that, or two old doors that I had to clamp together to get it to bend like that. As a teacher at a charter school in Nashville, Gilson and co-worker Austin Royer began working with young students to perfect the boards. In its form back then, it was not viable. It was not a very good snowboard at all. Um, and it was it really just existed in theory anyway. Um, but then I met Austin Royer. He and I were teaching science at a charter school in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and uh, so I figured that it would be a fun project to bring the kids in on. And as we got into our second year of teaching, we definitely wanted um, something else to be keeping ourselves busy after school, you know, something else intellectually stimulating. Um, so we sort of opened up this year-long lab of designing a, a snowboard, um, and it was sort of our, our own project, but we definitely wrapped the kids in on it. Um, totally bombed first try in December. Austin described it as like trying to ride a canoe down the mountain. I can show you guys those boards. Um, they're really heavy, really stiff. You cannot even flex them at all. Um, and the shape of the bottom was just not right. So the pair went back to the drawing board. Months later, they had come up with a design that Gilson says were performing substantially better. Their product was gaining popularity, they felt they had a groundbreaking design, and so forming a company began. The question was where to locate. We ended up uh, moving to Pennsylvania because Austin is from about a half a mile up the road. And so back then, you know, we had no funding, no nothing, um, no ability to rent the space. And so we ended up manufacturing alongside uh, horses and donkeys in a stable. And so, you know, we had this you know, CNC robot, this robot here actually, um, which is you a know, state-of-the-art robot. And then right next to it, you know, in the stable, there's a horse and donkeys and all that. So um, started there for a year and then moved down the road and moved into this space, which has really allowed us to sort of spread our wings. Now with 15 employees, they run out of a 5,000 square foot manufacturing facility on 17 acres of farmland along Penn's Creek. So about this design, Gilson says they have two patents on it. The standard snowboard would just be flat across the bottom. This has a soft edge here and then it's a flat runner here this way. Um, and then a concave in the middle. Uh, so basically it's like a catamaran of snowboards. The idea took a lot of trial and error, plus science. There's been an awful lot of research for how things perform in water. Now, the physical principles of H2O in the liquid state are substantially similar to the physical principles of H2O in the solid state, snow. Um, and so there's just this initial idea that a flat surface cannot be the best solution. There's got to be something out there that's better than that. Uh, the trouble is it's really difficult to build properly. And so I think that's what really had stagnated a lot of the research back in the day. Um, and so it was, uh, and if you look at our earliest, you know, probably 20, 30 boards, they're all just, you know, not right in some regard. It is a design that they always keep working on, says Gilson. It all starts with a piece of locally sourced wood. But this is all Pennsylvania poplar. We use Pennsylvania woods um, with the exception of bamboo and purple heart, which um, come from other locations but still come through the Pennsylvania facilities. Um, but this poplar is really like our bread and butter. This is what, you know, this is the, the wood that we use by far the most. Um, I think it's an absolutely stunning wood, especially because of the color variation. Um, no board ever comes out the same just because grain of wood is different. Um, and the coloration is different in the way that it gets stacked because these are all individual pieces. Each one of these will be a snowboard eventually. Um, and we've got some different woods that we play with. So this one's poplar, Pennsylvania poplar and Pennsylvania cherry um, for these two stringers here, which gives it a little bit more torsional rigid rigidity and strength longitudinally. Um, this is very much a specialty core. I love this one. This is, there's actually no poplar in this one. This is aspen, cherry and purple heart for red, white and blue at the core. So once the epoxy soaks in this, it really does look red, white, and blue, which is neat. From there, it's an intricate and detailed process to shape the wood, determine the board's measurement, size, color, and what graphics will be displayed. The base of the board is laid, 
Fiberglass is applied followed by graphics and a top sheet. Gilson says even with the high demand, they're able to customize boards for customers, making each one unique. We're able to um, you know, actually give each board a, a level of attention. We don't stock any inventory. So when someone, you know, we get these calls all the time, like, hey, do you guys have a board lying around that you just can't sell? No, I mean, it hasn't been built yet. And, you know, we don't build a board until there's a need for it, um, which is neat. It allows us to make sure that we're really only producing what we want to be producing. It allows us to do an amazing amount of custom work for the end consumer at a very low cost. And so you'll get stuff like this in it where, you know, when this is a finished board, this is going to be a very intense and vivid random streak put there by Mother Nature. And someone's going to know that literally no other board in the world will ever look like that again. It's not only manufacturing the boards, they also have to sell them. So the team travels coast to coast, showing off their boards on mountains all over the country. Gilson says they have an Airstream and a truck and typically travel about 17,000 miles between November and April, demoing their boards. The company is focused locally too, welcoming people to come see their boards and maybe even take them out for a test ride. Gilson says you don't have to be an advanced boarder to ride one of theirs. You don't have to be an, an advanced snowboarder to get one of these boards. No, in fact, our boards are definitely designed for the expert, but they've been making serious waves in beginners uh, in progression as well because that lifted edge makes it way easier to not catch an edge and fall. Um, so beginners have been finding that on these boards they learn, you know, in a much more intuitive and forgiving way. Um, they learn faster too, which is really good for us because that's you know, by accident a huge market for us. Gilson and his team think highly of their boards and in the future strive to make the best product for snowboarders of all ages and levels. The advanced technology they use is something they keep to themselves almost like a secret recipe but they ensure quality in every board they put out on the slopes. It's why they termed the phrase come for the top stay for the bottom. But the idea is that, you know, whether, whether you're looking at the top or the bottom of the board, it is substantially different than anything that's ever really been done before in the industry. You can check out the Gilson Board team, their products, and more of the story behind their company at gilsonboards.com. That's it for this episode of In Your Neighborhood. If you have a story idea, email us at iyn at fecv 8com Don't forget to check out our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. I'm Sarah Bartlett. I'll see you next time on In Your Neighborhood.